Hello grade 7. So we are going to continue with our chapter electrical circuits. These are the objectives that we're going to cover during this week's lecture. So you guys will be able to identify the different components of an electrical circuit. You're going to schematize an electrical circuit and you're going to distinguish between insulators and conductors. So what do we need to consist a complete electric circuit? So we already got, got introduced to the battery and the lamp. Okay, so what else do I need so that I can have a complete circuit? A simple circuit. I will need a switch and that's it? No, I will need connecting wires so that I connect them all together. Okay, so by using the battery lamp, the switch and connecting wires, we did this circuit right here. I will be applying this to the simulation in the upcoming few slides. So it says construct the circuit of the adjacent figure, keeping the switch's lever in a vertical position. So you guys can see the lever, it is, you know, being in a vertical position. Okay, so it is pushed up. Does the lamp glow? So what do you think? No. It does not. Is the lamp traversed by an electrical current? Now, if the lamp doesn't glow, it means that it is not traversed by an electrical current. So there is no electricity, you know, flowing through it. So no. Is the switch open or closed? You guys can see that it is open. Okay, so the switch is open. Great. So when the switch is open, it means that there is no electrical current in the circuit and the lamp will be turned off. It says now drop the lever down to a horizontal position. So I'm going to push this down to a horizontal position just like that. Is the result identical to the previous one? Now previously the lamp didn't glow. But in this case, the lamp is glowing. So I say no. What can you say about the switch now? The switch is closed. Okay, so it was open in the previous uh, experiment. Now it is closed. When the switch is closed, I have electrical current flowing through the circuit and the lamp glows. So, when a lamp is placed in a closed circuit, what do we mean by closed circuit? It means that the switch is closed. So, when the switch is closed, we call the circuit a closed circuit. It can glow. So, the lamp can glow if it is placed in a closed circuit. However, the lamp does not glow if the circuit is open. So when the switch is open, it means that the circuit is open. So the lamp doesn't glow. A switch allows us to open or close a closed or an open circuit respectively. Okay, so it's all, it all depends on the switch. If it's open, the circuit is open, lamp doesn't glow. If it's closed, circuit is closed, the lamp glows. Now click on this simulation and let's, you know, just uh, let's do this circuit in a simulation. So I already, you know, constructed the circuit. Okay, so you guys can see a battery, a lamp and a switch and connecting wires. Okay, now in this case, the switch is open. It means that the circuit is open, so the lamp the, doesn't glow. Now, once the switch is closed, it means the circuit is closed, so the lamp glows. And if you want to see the current, 
electrical current you can see that it is flowing through the circuit and it is you know lighting up the lamp and once we open the switch i will have no more electrical current flowing through the circuit now i'm sure that you guys are able to you know construct uh, an electric circuit but what if one of you decided to draw the battery let's say this way what if another person uh you know decided to draw it this way what if someone wants to do it like that see so your drawings might differ and it might be hard for all of us to understand what you actually are trying to draw this is why to avoid these bad sketches okay so scientists came up with a way of representing the components of an electric circuit or the elements of an electric circuit with the special symbols so each element will have a special symbol to refer to and then when we draw the when we schematize the electrical circuit, we use the symbols and not, you know, the drawing of the element. So the battery, it has a positive and negative pole. Okay, so this is how we draw a battery. This is the positive pole and this is the negative pole. Okay, just like that. So this is the symbol of a battery now as that of a lamp it's simple actually it's a circle with an x inside of it okay so this is the symbol of a lamp now in your books they are using another symbol which is also a circle but there is like a small rectangle in the middle so they use this one okay so they are both symbols for a lamp but this is the most uh, famous one okay so yeah this is the symbol of a lamp and the connecting wire it's a wire so it's just a line now as for the open switch it's it basically looks like that okay so i have a switch but it is open and here it closed the switch I have a switch but it is closed okay and we usually call the switch K so K is the symbol or the letter that refers to the switch okay so this is an open switch and this is a closed switch now the motor it is similar to that of a lamp okay but instead of having an x in the middle you guys have the letter m which basically you know short for motor okay and finally the electric generator it is electric generator so it generates electricity okay so same as a battery it generates electricity and uh the only difference between this one and a battery is that you know when it comes to a battery you guys will have a certain number written on it like let's say 5v which means 5 volt we'll be talking about this later or let's say 6 volt okay so you have a specific number which is the voltage okay uh, across this battery now in an electric generator this value it can change i can change this value okay so i can give the circuit more electricity all right or less electricity because i can modify this value i can change it we're not going to use this one much i'm not sure if we if we're going to use it at all okay but it's symbol it looks something like that so it is a circle and a g at the center g for generator and it has the plus and the minus the two poles because it's the same as the battery yeah and in your books instead of the circle they have it as a square okay it works too 
So now, instead of, you know, drawing an electrical circuit like this, which would take time and each one of us will have a different drawing, we will all be able to draw it using the symbols. Okay, so this is the symbol of a battery. Okay, this is the symbol of a lamp. And this is the symbol of the switch. Okay, and now all you have to do is to connect them using connecting wires, which are basically lines and drawing lines. And that's it. This is K, the closed switch. And yeah, this is the circuit. So from now on, this is how we're going to draw the circuit. Now concerning the plus and the minus, the plus is the positive pole. Okay, so we usually put a P right next to it. Okay, so this is positive pole. Minus is the negative pole, so we put N right next to it. All right, and as you can see, these uh, nodes, they are simply the connections that I have between them. Okay, so they are the connections. I just named them A, B, and C, so they are just points, and yeah. Now we already talked about electrical current flowing through the circuit, lighting up the lamp and such. Uh, but for the electrical current to flow through the circuit, it means all the elements in the circuit must be conductors because insulators does not allow the electrical current to flow through it. So to understand more, uh, conductors and insulators. Just click on the simulation and meet me in the next slide. Okay, so if you guys look at the circuit, it consists of a lamp and a battery and connecting wires in blue. And we have this space right here. Okay, we don't have anything that is uh, connected here. Okay, so there is like um, it is open. It is an open circuit. There is nothing here as if I have an open switch here. Okay, this is similar to an open switch. So if we were to think, what do we actually have here? You would tell me we have air. So yeah, we have air right here. So does the lamp, uh, you know, does it glow? No, it does not glow. So the air is an insulator because it doesn't allow the electrical current to flow through it. Let's try something else. I'm gonna take the nail and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the nail here. So this is like an iron nail. All right, so the lamp is lit, which means that the nail is a conductor. It's a conductor of electricity. So it allows the electrical current to flow through it and this is why the lamp glows. Let's try the eraser. Okay, so nothing happens. It means that the, that the eraser is an insulator. Let's try the coin, which is a metal coin. Okay, so the coin is a conductor because it allows the electricity to flow in the circuit. How about the marker? The marker is an insulator. Okay, guys, so we have many more conductors and insulators and we're going to mention them. We're going to mention like most of them in the uh, PowerPoint. So an electric conductor allows the passage of an electrical current. Okay, so it allows the current to flow through it. Examples, metals such as copper, iron, steel, all metals actually. Okay, so they allow the current to flow through them. Whereas insulators, an insulator does not allow the passage of an electrical current. We saw the case of an eraser, air, and you know the marker case okay but we have other examples like the wood glass rubber same as that of an eraser and air okay and we have also other examples which i will be mentioning them uh, in the next slide so yeah 
Conductors allow the passage of electrical current. Insulators do not allow the passage of an electrical current. Okay, so we will give other examples about conductors and insulators. And just a little note that all metals are conductors, starting with aluminum rod, okay, which is made up of aluminum. Okay, aluminum is a metal, so it is a conductor, okay, and it's not an insulator. Okay, so I put a plus on the conductor, it means that this is a conductor. How about the copper rod? Okay, so copper, copper is a metal, so it is a conductor. How about wood? Wood is an insulator. How about steel? Steel is a conductor, it's a metal. How about the cardboard? Cardboard is an insulator. How about, it's here, it says copper wire, and it's not a copper rod. Copper wire, it's like the connecting wires that we use in a circuit. Okay, so they are also conductors. How about the plastic ruler? Okay, which is made up of plastic. Plastic is an insulator. Iron nail. So iron, conductor, pencil mid piece, graphite. Now this is really important. You know, the graphite, which is the substance that pencils are made up and this is made up of, which allows us to write, okay? This is a non-metal substance, but yet it is a conductor and it's not an insulator. How about the nylon uh, sheath? So it is made up of nylon, okay, which is an insulator. How about a glass insulator? How about porcelain, porcelain piece, which is made up of porcelain? It is an insulator. Okay, so basically all metals are conductors and graphite, which is not a metal, it is also a conductor and all the other substances are insulators, okay? That is it. We're done with this week's lecture. I hope you guys found it interesting and I encourage you to try out the simulations so that you can understand the lesson more. Um, yeah, so I'll see you guys soon. Take care and bye-bye.